Hello and welcome to this lockdown learning video where we're going to take a look at Media Bay. So this is one of the areas where I found that often people maybe pay it a visit and then look at it and go, oh no, I'm not going there and then close it and don't don't make use of it. And that's a pity. I'll be honest, I used to do pretty much the same and then I started actually using it and it can be pretty useful. It can do a lot of stuff for you, can make life a lot easier. So we're going to spend a bit of time looking at it. So Media Bay is under media, funnily enough, and then Media Bay. So if previously you remember looking at importing loops from the loop browser, you'll realize this is pretty similar. So Media Bay is like the super set of features. So it's got it's got everything in it. So it can look at all sorts of different content. So that's what it's useful for. So in this case, I'm going to look at VST Sound. So this is the installed content that comes with uh, Cubase. I've got more on here than you probably will have because I've got full versions of a few Steinberg products on here. But it will work exactly the same regardless of what you've got. So you can see here, we've got all these different uh, types of content which are in here. And we're going to audition a few of them. So firstly, if it's an audio I think if you drill down through this file browser here, we can get to Blockbuster, then audio files. And looking in here, it's even categorized a little bit. So drum loops. So if we click on that, we just see just what's in that folder. And if we want to, we can filter them further. Although they're all drums and percussion, beats, experimental, etc. In fact, there's no real filtering in this case because they're all got the same metadata attached to them. If you want to audition it, just click on it once and it'll get played. So here we're hearing, you know, experimental drum loop and you can listen to different ones, etc. And hear all those kind of things matching. You can stop them with the transport controls. Now there's a few buttons here which are quite useful. So autoplay is typically what you'd want because then you can just navigate with your keyboard or just with your mouse. Align beats to project is useful because then it will time stretch it to fit. So although this is being played at 100 BPM, we are currently at 120. So if we turn that on and then click on a new loop, it's playing it at what it thinks will match, which generally with the Steinberg content will do. And if we change the tempo, if we go crazy, Let's go 180. That'll be fun. Uh, and then play another one. The one that you, you can hear that. Let's slow the tempo down so it actually works musically. So generally with that turned on, generally with that turned on, you'll get a good idea of what it will sound like if it's in your project. And if you turn this on, then if you've got a project uh, where you're playing, it will actually play it only when you're doing that. So that can make it really good for auditioning loops in Citri, which is what I find this is best for. So I used to just be a straightforward file, import audio file kind of guy, but now I find doing things through Media Bay makes life so much easier because everything just gets synced to your project. And you can hear what it's like in context. If you like anything, just double click it. So let's say we want to import this one into our project. If we just double click it, it gets imported. So if I close that, it will get imported there. And you'll see if we zoom out a little bit, it's aligned to the project tempo because it knows that. So that's what the wavy line means. It means it's in musical mode and it's being stretched, as you can see here, appropriately. So now that fits in four bars of the project. We're done. You can also drag them on if you want to do that. So if you want to drag it to a particular track or a particular place, etc., then you can just pick it up and then put it wherever you want. I tend to double click because uh, I'm lazy, but sometimes that means, makes more work for you because it will create a track underneath the, the bottom of your project, etc. generally. So I'm just gonna remove that. Now, the beauty of Media Bay, or one of the th nice things about it, is that it treats everything the same. So in the same way on the project window, your parts are the same, whether they are MIDI or audio, etc. This tries to do that for different kinds of content so for instance if we go to this acoustic agent se1 we can see we're in vst3 presets we click on that we've got all of the presets for acoustic agent se and if we click on this once after a bit of a delay because it's got to load an instrument up and sort of hide it from you but after a bit of a delay we get the on-screen keyboard here which kind of works and we can play it so we can hear that drum etc Generally, if you've got a external keyboard attached, you'll be able to play with that. Or you can use the on-screen keyboard if you turn it on. And you can audition that as you go. So you can pick a different one. So let's say we want to have 
Oh, dark wave. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? So let's click on that instead. Now, I found this is a bit glitchy and sometimes you need to turn on-screen keyboard off and back on again for it to work. And sometimes you don't. It just seems to depend which way the wind is blowing. So these all sound pretty similar, but you can see it's loading them up. So I sometimes find the on-screen keyboard after a while will stop working on this kind of thing, but let's change to another one. Let's go to Anima. So we've got some presets in there. And if we load that up, you'll see we get something completely different because it's not drums, it's synth strings. Again, the on-screen keyboard is out of focus. Change that, but then if we go to alternate motion, it takes a few seconds to load up. So you can see you get that kind of thing. You can audition all of these. There's loads of sounds. I'll be honest, I haven't been through all of these, so I'll probably find something nice while I'm noodling around with this. Um, with these, it works in exactly the same way. So if you decide you like alternate motion, just double click it and behind there, just going to close that. We can see it's been created. So it's created the right instrument. We don't need to find out what it is. It's already done all that for us, loaded that preset up, and then that's playable straight away and part of our project. Goes further than that, because obviously that's just loading up an instrument, but on some, we will find track presets. So a track preset is a combination typically of an instrument or a sampler track, etc., and also some EQ settings, effects, and so on. So with that, let's find these ones. So track preset sampler in this one in particular, and then let's audition some of those. So accept this ring. Once that loads up, it takes a few seconds as ever. So that's useful. Let's say we want to load that up again. Just double click it. And then now we can see we've got a sampler track which has been loaded up. And not just that, so we've got EQ settings, so you can see those have been set, and also there are, in this case, four effects which have been loaded up. So it's a combination of things in the case of a track preset. Track presets are really useful. I use them a lot because it saves me having to repeat the same thing over and over again. Much more flexible than using templates I've found, so mostly I will use that. There'll be a video on that somewhere on the channel at some point. So that's a quick journey into Media Bay for today. So I'd encourage you, even if you've got much less content than this, because obviously this is like when you've spent all of your money on Steinberg products, which, uh, yeah, sorry about that, but I have done. So you'll have less than this, but it will still be useful. In the next video, we're going to look at how you can add third-party content of your own to it in Media Bay, just indexing that kind of thing, and then everything's all in the same place. So I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you again soon.